This is the Polaris M Razor, and vehicles like it could be the future of the US Army's light cavalry. The US 25th Infantry Division in Hawaii has been testing a new ultralight cavalry concept that doubles down on light cav's key advantages, stealth and playing to rough terrain. I've gotten some new info about this concept from soldiers in the platoon testing it, but we'll come back to that. First, what would this concept be adding to? American light cav squadrons currently have two main components. A motorized component, including two company-sized troops mounted on Humvees with a small amount of dismounted scouts, and a dismounted component represented by a troop of infantrymen. This provides a mix of mobile scouts that can cover ground quickly and bring heavy weapons to bear, as well as dismounted scouts that can conduct stealthy reconnaissance, infiltrations, operate in complex terrain, and man dismounted observation posts. The ultralight concept hasn't been framed as a complete replacement for heavier light vehicles like the Humvee, but more as an augmentation to the dismounted scouts within the motorized component. The 25th Infantry Division's tests employed the four-seater Polaris M-Razor and Polaris Dagger, which can theoretically seat eight or nine. Armor on both platforms is non-existent, and firepower is limited to the personal weapons of the passengers or perhaps mounted MGs in the future. If the US Army's light cav adopts the concept, they wouldn't even be the first American recon community to do it. The US Marine Corps reconnaissance battalions, which are the Marines' light special reconnaissance units, have been using the M-Razor for over half a decade. The idea is to mount the dismount scouts in stealthy ultralight vehicles separately from the Humvees so they can drive off-road in rougher terrain without being spotted. The ability to take on rougher terrain opens up areas that the enemy might not think could be occupied, and could provide more cover from direct observation. A key piece of context is the 25th Infantry Division is aligned to the Indo-Pacific where there's a significant amount of jungle, so playing to the terrain is critical. While purely dismounted scouts are even lower signature and can operate in even rougher terrain, the speed of the ultralight vehicles could allow scouts to reach their objectives in a more timely manner, potentially into enemy territory by using stealth. This would not only increase the amount of time and space between the friendly force and enemy contact, but open up otherwise hidden rear area targets like enemy command and control nodes and artillery to ground observation. Ultralight vehicles could even alleviate some of the issues that future dismounted recon teams will have to face, such as the weight burden of drones, batteries, and other exotic equipment like portable electronic warfare systems to defeat the enemy's own drones. And that's just fancy new stuff. The same applies to classic equipment like javelins, medium MGs, radios, and optics, which can be driven further if terrain is passable enough. In terms of unit organizations, I'll cover one configuration from 2022 and the 2023 refinement. Both were tested by 3rd Platoon, Blackfoot Troop of 3-4 Cavalry, a mounted cav troop part of the 25th Infantry Division's 3rd Brigade. The other platoons in the troop retained a conventional motorized configuration with 50 cows and tow missiles. The 2022 configuration was referenced in this armor article written by the platoon leader at the time, but I've personally gotten further clarification from another soldier in the platoon. Initially, the platoon retained a regular scout platoon structure. There was a platoon HQ with two Humvees, one for the PL and one for the platoon sergeant. Alpha Section had one of the larger Polaris Daggers and one Humvee, while Bravo Section replaced one of their Humvees with a four-seat Polaris M-Razor. They were given one of each type of vehicle to determine which one the squadron should purchase more of. The PL described it as a split-section concept. The Polaris vehicles would basically get the dismounted scouts to within 75 meters of their dismounted observation post, while the Humvees, referred to as gun trucks, occupied a support by fire position 250 meters to the rear. Once in contact, the dismount scouts would retrograde back to the gun trucks, which would engage the enemy infantry. They'd then use the ultralight vehicles to occupy a secondary site so as to continue observing the enemy. Following that initial period, the platoon received a second dagger, but kept the M-Razor. The platoon leader traded their Humvee for the M-Razor, and the sections dropped their Humvees to be mounted in one dagger each. 
the Platoon Sergeant's Humvee also gained a trailer to rectify sustainment issues. In terms of personnel, this platoon was actually running under strength, so while the doctrinal platoon is 24 soldiers, they only had 16. In the m Razor sat the PL and a three-man team, which could man an M240 Lima Medium MG or a Javelin anti-tank guided missile system. In practice, usually only the M240 was taken out unless the platoon was occupying a static position for long periods or there was an armor threat. In the Humvee sat the platoon sergeant, driver, gunner for the M250 cal, and medic. With the other Humvees put out to pasture, the platoon sergeant's vehicle would also be the platoon's most substantial fire support platform. In each section, the dagger sat the section leader and three scouts. They manned an M249, Carl Gustav Recoilless Rifle, and M110 Designated Marksman Rifle. I've been told that unlike the Javelin, these weapons were carried at all times. They actually originally had an M240 instead of an M249, but it encumbered the section too much, especially with the lack of an assisting gunner. The section leader and Carl Gustav gunner would carry rounds for the Carl G, while the DMR guy carried the laser target locator module, a multi-purpose sensor including a laser rangefinder, cameras, magnetic compass, and an anti-spoof GPS, as well as a PAS-35, which is an infrared imager for mounting on weapons. Generally, when the scouts dismounted and the vehicles were left at a hide site, the passengers of the platoon sergeant's Humvee would act as a security element. This would not eat into the scout section's manpower, which is fairly critical because the platoon only had eight dismounted scouts. Although the dagger can theoretically seat eight or nine, they were only employing the seats up front. Their daggers lacked roll bars over the bed in the back where those additional four would sit, so it'd probably be unsafe to do so. But, if the roll bar attachment was procured, two daggers could fit the doctrinal 24-man platoon, potentially at the expense of bed space for gear. In practice, the understrength platoon could man one long-term dismounted observation post, which are OPs manned for 12 hours or longer, or multiple short-term OPs, same as the regular motorized scout platoon. But if the platoon was at full strength with 24 troopers, they theoretically have superior dismount strength due to not needing to leave skeleton crews to man vehicles when stationary. In terms of trade-offs, the advantages of this equipment are lower signature than a Humvee, superior mobility in denser terrain, and potentially more dismount strength if manning is equal. With a lower signature and better mobility, the vehicles could get the scouts closer to the enemy than a Humvee, and quicker than purely dismounted scouts. However, the ultralight platoon also has less combat power than the motorized scout platoon with its Humvees, and they lack protection from even light small arms fire. So fighting for information, which involves destroying the enemy's reconnaissance and possibly advanced guards to observe the main body, is probably off the table even against light forces. They would probably also be vulnerable to counter-reconnaissance efforts in a similar way to dismounted calf troops if discovered. Rather than forceful recon methods, the ultralights would focus on infiltration behind enemy lines, stealthy dismounted recon in support of the mounted calf, setting up ambushes, and traversing the harsh terrain of the Indo-Pacific. How this will fit in the Army 2030 reform, I don't know. Even if the test unit recommends it for general adoption, doesn't mean the doctrine proponents will agree, and it could stay a localized technique specific to the 25th's jungle warfare reputation, but it could also augment select light units in the future. If you want to look at other countries' cavalry, check out this video on why the French use light scout cars to support their tanks. I'll see you over there.